because liquids flow into small annular spaces between two and five thousandths of an inch independent of gravity. Now we have to let that cool by use of natural convection and the purge gas flowing through there until it's cooled to the touch. And the black forming in the outside, what does that indicate? Okay, that's the, that is the same copper oxide that would be on the inside of the pipe if we didn't have our nitrogen purge flowing on the inside. That's what actually occurs in the natural chemical reaction mm -hmm. between the oxygen in the air and the heated copper. So inside, because of the nitrogen, inside that, that copper pipe is as clean and as shiny as, uh, as it could be, right? That's exactly right. right clean as it comes okay. from the factory and we remain that way. Okay, we completed the horizontal coupon, now what's next? Now we're gonna do the vertical. And on the vertical coupon, we're gonna do two up feeds. One is gonna be done, this bottom of the joint is gonna be up feed, then I'm gonna turn it over, just like that, and do the bottom, or which is now the bottom, up feed, so we'll have two up feed joints on the same coupon. Okay, and do we need to make a, a mark or a notch on the vertical? No, there's no notch made on the vertical coupon because you can take your specimen cut from anywhere around the pipe. Okay. The purge is flowing through. I check the flow meter. And, and the difference, the reason you have to do both vertical and horizontal is because the material flows in a different manner? That is correct. The technique is different and the material is subject to flowing differently on a vertical joint than it would be on a horizontal because in this case gravity does play up as, uh, as a factor that if you don't heat the joint correctly from far enough down below to far enough up above you won't get your 100% penetration. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to start at the bottom and keep my heat moving going from the bottom piece of pipe up through the joint zone to the top piece of pipe. Keep it moving so that it gets heated evenly. I see you're starting from the bottom of the fitting. That's correct, because heat rises just like it did on the horizontal. We'd, we'd start at the bottom because we're only going to do one upfeed joint. I'm going to cap it around there, and I'm going to come around and do the other side, coming back to it again. Now that I've done that joint, we keep the purge is still running on it. We will now, after it has a chance just to settle just a little bit so we don't disturb the joint, then I will turn it 180 degrees and we'll do the other side of the joint. Now it's already preheated, so it shouldn't take too much extra heat to get it back up to temperature again. Following the same procedure, always keeping our heat moving from the pipe up to the joint. And again, you're going to work on the bottom of the fitting. That's correct, on the bottom, so we have an up feed again. This is our second up feed.
And there again, we should have a completed, 100% filled braze joint. We have to let the nitrogen purge flow until it's cooled to the touch. Okay, we're ready to cut a specimen from a coupon, and I'm sure there are some major safety issues involved here. What are those, Dana? That's correct. We're going to be using a skill saw to cut two times down our coupon, and during that process, we have a hardened blade on here, and it'll throw a lot of copper chips up. So we need to be sure that besides wearing our safety glasses we wore during our brazing process, we also have to wear secondary eye protection, which will be a face shield, and that protects our face and our eyes from getting injured. Besides that, we have to be sure that nobody in the general vicinity of where we're doing this cutting could be injured, so everyone needs to stay away because it throws a lot of chips up. I bet that includes me. <laughs> so I'm going to take his warning, and I'll be right back. Now we're going to take our coupon that we've completely brazed. We've marked the top of it on a horizontal coupon. It has a notch right there made with the file. And we're going to cut the specimen from either the 130 or the 1030. It doesn't matter which side from the top or 45 degrees from the perpendicular. So I'll place that in our apparatus here for cutting. Tighten it up so that it holds it in place. Turn it. Okay, safe for you to return. Okay. Well, thanks, Dana. Uh, now, it looks like you've cut about a half-inch wide specimen out of the coupon. Now, all of this goes to the testing lab. Is that right? That is correct. We have to send along the coupon along with the specimen to the testing agency. And the testing agency is going to buff up both sides of the specimen and look at it to make sure that there are not any voids. And what is a void exactly? A void is an area where the filler metal did not actually penetrate the joint, so there's minimums and maximums that the criteria must meet to the standard. Now, I, th I think you mentioned that the, the testing criteria are different for a horizontal braze and a, and a vertical one. That is correct. This was out of the horizontal coupon. It had to be cut from the 45-degree angle. When we're cutting the piece out of the vertical, it still needs to be a half-inch wide, but you can cut it from anywhere on the specimen. It doesn't have to be a particular space. Now, Dana, how do we identify the specimens and coupons for shipment to the testing facility? Now, we have to mark both the coupon and the strap that we cut out with the information of your Social Security number, your name, and the position of the joint. And that can be done several ways. One of the ways is with an indelible marker, such as a Sharpie fine point. Or you can use a mechanical etcher pencil that will indelibly write on here. It has to be something that's legible so that the testing agency can actually match up the coupon to the strap. Well, Dana, thank you very much for the demonstration. As I said before, medical gas systems are the heart and the lungs of healthcare facilities. And now perhaps we can all appreciate even more the skill and the expertise of the installer in keeping these systems contamination free and keeping them up to the high standards that healthcare facilities require.